Hello ladies and gentlemen, Top Hat Gaming Man here, creator of content covering console curiosities. This week in the world of the information superhighway, nobody will shut up about the release of the Sega Mega Drive Mini due to the system's recent release. Covering trends can be an extremely easy and lazy way to make money online after all, so people have every reason to talk about the exact same things at the exact same time. I, on the other hand, are a little bit more sophisticated than the masses, so the Mega Drive Mini instead got me thinking about other officially licensed Mega Drive consoles, such as the device seen in the thumbnail of this video. So ladies and gentlemen, with this in mind, this is the mad story of the Sega Mega Drive 4, an officially licensed Sega console you have probably never heard of. Yeah. If you are new to this channel, there is a strong chance that you are wondering when the hell did they ever get around to producing a bloody Sega Mega Drive 4. However, if you are a regular, I would gather by now you know exactly what direction today's content is going in, especially due to the fact that a logo displayed on the system gives the game away anyway. The console is emblazoned with the Tech Toy logo, a technology company we have discussed on this channel many times before, who in the previous century managed to secure a licensing deal with Sega to be allowed to manufacture and sell Sega consoles across Brazil and some other regions of South America. To briefly brush up on history for new viewers of this channel, this deal was created mainly due to the outrageous import tariffs Brazil had in place when it came to the importing of electronic goods. Thus meaning it was only possible to Sega to get hardware out to the Brazilian public at a competitive price through having their console manufactured directly in Brazil. The Brazilian Sega story though is an intriguing one, and one that differs greatly from the rest of the world and due to a range of market forces that differ greatly from the developed world, to some degree both the Sega Master System and Sega Mega Drive have always remained somewhat relevant and can still be purchased in their newest iterations right up until this very day with no gap stops in distribution. Whilst the mini craze and the return of the Mega Drive brand is fairly new in the West, in Brazil on the other hand, Mega Drive hardware has never ever taken a break or day off and, as a result, a range of exclusive games for the platform have even been developed in the region. A few months back, we looked at the countless hardware revisions the Sega Master System has been given by Tectoy, and today we are going to go down a similar route and look at the similar treatment the company has given to the Mega Drive. So I advise you all to buckle up, as we have a lot of hardware variants to get through to get us from the early 90s right up until today. So, here we go! When the Mega Drive was first released in Brazil, the launch was in some ways both the same as in Europe and the United States, as the system would come pre-packed with Altered Beast, as shown in the picture here. The platform would make its Brazilian debut in September of 1990, around the same time it launched in power regions and only a couple of weeks after the US launch, so the system was not dated at all by that time by any means. It would not be long, just like the rest of the world, that the packing game would later be changed to Sonic the Hedgehog, the new ever so popular Sega mascot. So once again, no surprises here really, and once again, everything simply run in parallel to the rest of the world. Or did it run parallel? Upon further inspection of the Mega Drive's box, for some reason the device by this point was now being marketed as the Mega Drive 2 which interestingly, Tektoy also chose to do with the Sega Master System upon Sonic the Hedgehog's release. So almost straight away, Tektoy were choosing to handle the Mega Drive a little differently to Sega elsewhere. Another box variant of this Mega Drive 1 being marketed as a Mega Drive 2 would later come paired with Sonic 2, and past that, a model would come out with no games that would simply be sold as the Mega Drive control unit. Next in Mega Drive history, the Mega Drive would see a newly revised form factor that would be marketed around most of the world as the Mega Drive 2, and of course be marketed as the Genesis 2 in North America. Obviously though, as we have just learned, 
Tech Toy had already cheekily renamed the first Mega Drive for Mega Drive 2. So with a new form factor, they were forced to rechristen it as the Mega Drive 3. This model, illustrated here, came with a promotional Sega CD and Sonic 2. The Tech Toy Mega Drive 3 would come packed with a range of different games, resulting in some really cool box variants, such as boxes displaying Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat, FIFA International Soccer, Virtual Racing, and Mortal Kombat 3. Moving forward, the Mega Drive 3 would begin to come packed with multi cartridges, such as the Sega Top 10 cartridge, which I made the inference of most likely being Tech Toy games. However, upon doing some research, each game included on the cartridge were well known Sega games, such as Sonic, Golden Axe, and Streets of Rage. Further to this, some systems would begin to be sold with turbo pads, and the platform would be renamed again, this time as the Super Mega Drive 3. As by this point in time, being a Mega Drive was not simply enough, it had to be Super as well. Future Super Mega Drive 3s would be sold with a game based on the show Miheo, if I am pronouncing that correctly, which I'm probably not, which translates as Show Million, a TV program that began airing in 1999 that appears to be a knockoff of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, with a top prize of 1 million reais, which is the Brazilian currency, which I'm also probably not pronouncing correctly. Uh, basically, 1 million in this currency translates to simply $241,000 if we are going to use the world's most recognisable currency. It would only be a matter of time before the Super Mega Drive 3 would be packed with both the Sega Top 10 cartridge and Show Miaho Volume 1 and 2 as we moved into the 2000s. So, whilst the Dreamcast was dying out around the world, there were Brazilians who were basically having casual rounds of who wants to be a millionaire on their newly acquired Super Mega Drive 3s. Next in line for the Mega Drive in Brazil was the same treatment that Tectoy had given to the Master System at the time. Yearly releases of the device now recolored to grey, featuring increasing amounts of games built into the device. Like with the Master System 3s, the Super Mega Drive 3 variants would usually feature Dreamcast era Sonic on the actual box art. These style Super Mega Drive 3s were peak, coming with 86 pre-installed games which were a combination of well-known Sega titles combined with mobile-like games created by Tectoy. By 2008, yes ladies and gentlemen, we have now got that far down the Sega Mega Drive timeline, Tectoy would give the platform its biggest overhaul to date, and the system's first completely new form factor in many years. This system was questionably simply named the Mega Drive 3 yet again, dropping the super part from the title altogether. This model very clearly took influence straight from the design of the Nintendo Wii, a system that had recently sold record numbers for Nintendo. So I guess it makes a lot of sense Tectoy would want to copy that design. In fact, if you look at Tectoy's exclusive console that was also released around this time frame, known as the Zebo, which I've also covered on this channel before, you can see the Wii design is clearly emulated there too. So the company's Wii fetish obviously resulted in the company giving a golden shower to the Mega Drive as well. This system, which I shall now simply refer to as the Wii Mega Drive going forward, had a totally new look and shared no relation in terms of design to the previous models of Mega Drive 3 that had been released by Tectoy. With this model, 86 games were in the memory and thought of which were games that Electronic Arts produced for mobile phones that were ported over to the Mega Drive by Tectoy. This meant that new games were released for the console years after support had officially ended by Sega. Besides what appeared to be wireless controllers for the system, the most notable addition was the inclusion of the built-in EA games. This would include the likes of The Sims 2, FIFA Street and FIFA 2008. I bet you did not know you could play those on a Mega Drive! The platform drew a lot of controversy on Brazilian internet forums with users comparing the new design to sandwich makers, grills and even children's lunchboxes. After that atrocity, of a curiosity, we finally got to the system in the thumbnail of this video, the Sega Mega Drive 4, 
which this time, to Tech Toys credit, looks a lot more like a traditional game console, but once again features a design drastically different from the Mega Drives most of us love and remember. Now, what was the point of the Mega Drive 4, you may ask? Well, in this instance, Tech Toy were once again cashing in on a popular gaming trend. Previously, the company had imitated the Wii. This time, they chose to create a whole new Mega Drive variant to help promote a packing game and peripheral which came with this system. Most of us by this point will probably remember an extremely popular rhythm game known as Guitar Hero. However, what less people will remember is a less popular game known as Guitar Idol that ran on the Mega Drive 4 and played with the Guitar Idol, well, um, guitar peripheral. Anyway, here is some footage of the 16-bit answer to Guitar Hero in action. However, I am scared to play you the actual sound in case I get a cheeky copyright strike on my channel. But here is footage of the game nonetheless. Past this point, Tectoy would release some cheap looking handheld Mega Drives, which from looking at the box art, look identical from those created by At Games here in the West. So nothing to talk about regarding those really. And as a final and most recent chapter in Brazilian Mega Drive history, in 2017 Tectoy would release the Mega Drive Mini, once again cashing in on a popular trend. This device obviously predates the Mega Drive Minis that were released by Sega themselves earlier this week, but in some ways cannot ever have been as exciting in Brazil, when you take into account that the Mega Drive never ever left the market to begin with, and as a result forever remains a current gen system there. Something I will say I like about this model is that it came with the same Altered Beast packaging as the original Tech Toy Mega Drive, and it does feature a micro SD slot. Sadly however, this device only features an AV out, all in all not making it particularly different from the Mega Drive 4 or the Wii Mega Drive in terms of what it can actually output. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the story of the Brazilian Mega Drive Menagerie and even the bloody Mega Drive 4. If you would like to procure a Mega Drive 4 of your own, from what I can see, you can still pick them up brand new from Tech Toys official website. However, be warned, they are very expensive, which is why I would gather there's still many in stock. If you enjoyed this video, then like, subscribe, and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Brazilian Mega Drive history was certainly a lot more interesting and varied than I initially imagined. So I'd be interested to hear whether or not you share the same sentiment and enthusiasm for this ridiculous subject choice. Lastly, the time and effort I currently put into these videos is only possible due to my small group of channel patrons who financially support my work, allowing me to invest large amounts of time and effort into these projects. So a huge thank you and massive shout out to Carl Johnson, Shizuka Kobayashi, JD Robbins, Greg Hooper, Sebastian Great, Sid Spaces, Andrew Bazanski, Edward O'Reilly, Quang DX, Sponge Matt B, Michael Baker, Hans Christian, Computer Man, Antonio Rodriguez, and all of my other patrons. You all make my life that little bit more fun. 